Hi, and welcome to theCUBE, the leading source for insights into the world of technology and innovation. I'm your host, Donald Klein, and today's topic is the exploding software segment of robotic process automation, where Automation Anywhere is one of the leading providers. To have that conversation, I, today I'm joined by Riyad Dridi, CMO of Automation Anywhere. Welcome to the show, Riyad. Thank you for having me. Great, okay, so look, you're relatively new to Automation Anywhere, is that correct? Yes, I've been there for about six months now. Excellent, so why don't you talk a little bit about your background and how you, how you came to the world of RPA. Yeah, so I've been in the IT industry for about 20 years, been in the hardware space and the software space and the cloud space uh, more recently. So when I heard about Automation Anywhere, the RPA space, did my due diligence and find out how fast this technology was catching on in enterprises, I got really, really excited and then met the management team and I get even more excited and ended up you know, taking the job. Well, congratulations. Thank you. It's, it's an exploding segment for sure. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about what you see happening in this market and how fast it's growing? Yeah, so uh, there are many studies out there and of course we have our own internal data, but the market right now, according to Gartner, is growing at about 63% year over year. It's the fastest growing enterprise software market in the industry right now and it's projected to continue to grow at that pace for the foreseeable future. Okay, and let's, let's talk about sort of, for people who are not that familiar with RPA, it's, it's obviously an acronym that's being you know, tossed around a lot, but you know, talk to us about ro robotic process automation and, and, and what, how you define that category. Right, so that was one of the challenge early on is to try to put a label on this segment, which is really about automating processes end to end as much as possible. And so the RPA, RPA category is where you know, some of the analysts decided to focus on, and so what it does is really allow businesses to deploy software robots to business processes so that process can be handled by bots instead of humans. The mundane, repetitive tasks that humans do as part of that end-to-end -end process, whether it's a, um, you know order to cash process or procure to pay process, any frankly business process, there are things that humans should, be not, should not be doing, should be better suited to do more creative work, that's when you know, bots come into play and the whole category was named uh, robotic process automation because the robots are taking the place of the humans in that terms of uh, process automation. Got it, okay, so, so everybody talks about the notion of bots, right? right? So, so creating bots, right, and what's kind of fascinating about this world is, is that you know, for, for uh, customers that deploy this type of solution, right, they're growing a whole library of bots, right, right, which are doing things. Maybe just walk us through an example bot and what a bot does and why this technology is so, so unique. Right, so think about, first of all, the problem that those bots are solving, right? Okay. So today you have, ERP applications, CRM applications, any sort of applications in, in businesses to really automate a process. Like I said, an order to cash process, procure to pay process. That's why people have bought the technology. But what the industry has realized is after 20 years or more of using the same technology, humans were still doing uh, parts of the process that should have been automated by the software. So when you look at the average enterprises, only 20% of the steps that should be automated are automated. 80% of it is done by humans. Whether it's opening files, reading documents, cutting and pasting, filling out forms, you know, playing with Excel, and, and kind of loading data uh, into systems, data entry, a lot of it is still done by humans. So what the bots do is go in and take that work away from the humans so they can really focus on, on better tasks. That's really what, what it is. And so just so everybody's kind of clear, so, so what's really so uh, intelligent about these capabilities, right, is it takes something sort of like invoices, right? right? Any company, you know, receiving lots and lots of invoices, all these invoices are going to be formatted in different ways. Right. Correct? Right. And, and, and historically, it's been up to a human to kind of look through that invoice pull out the relevant pieces of information, right, and enter that into the system so that the system can then issue the PO or pay the PO, et cetera, right? Exactly. But what your bots can do, or what the, 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 the space as a whole, right, is they can intelligently scan these documents and look for the kind of pieces of information and actually load those into the system directly. That, that's exactly right. So what the bots are doing now is with computer vision, they're able to look into uh, application, they're able to assess the data, they're able to assess uh, the information uh, from uh, that data and then process it, li process it uh, like uh, humans would do. So they're able to, again, get in, uh, look at invoices or any type of frankly unstructured data or semi-structured data and take that data, analyze it, and then uh, manipulate it like a human would do. Excellent. Exception is that they're obviously doing it 24-7 much faster 
with less errors. Got it, right. So you're turning people who previously may have been focused on kind of a data entry task, right, into kind of managing a process, right? That's exactly, so basically what we like to say is we're taking the robots out of humans and then giving it to the robots who are sup supposed to be doing the work. Excellent. And that's kind of phase one. And the phase two is obviously making those robots more intelligent so that they're not able to do just the simplest of simplest tasks, but start to be a little bit more intelligent and use AI to do things that are a little bit more advanced and more complicated. Okay, excellent. So look, you guys have got some news, yep. right? You've kind of just come out with a big new release of your platform. Why don't you just kind of talk us through what, what, what the news is and, and what you guys yeah, are, have so, released. So if you think about what the space has done so far is taking a process that usually is a known process, like I said, in order to cache, even a simpler process, right? And taking a look at the different steps and tasks that people have to do and say, let's now automate that, those tasks and, and that particular process. Uh, a lot of the time is spent on trying to figure out the process. I don't know about your company, but I know in a lot of companies that I've been at, a lot of processes are not documented. So what we've announced uh, yesterday is uh, a bot we call this discovery bot, that allows us to discover the processes that people work with. So if you are, again, uh, an agent or a knowledge worker in an organization, you're going through a certain number of steps. The bot's going to basically analyze all those different steps, map the process, allows you to understand the flow you're going through, and let you know that if you automate those repetitive tasks within your process, you're going to be able to save a certain amount of time and, and energy and have a better process in place. And then the cool thing about what we announced yesterday, and this is unique in the industry today, is the ability to create bots automatically from analyzing that process. So again, the industry has matured into analyzing uh, uh, processes manually or using certain tools, but then the work had to be done uh, by a different platform to basically create the bots from these processes. We're the only provider today that can analyze processes with a tool and then create the bots automatically, shrinking the time for process automation end to end. Fantastic, okay, you know, but, but also part of this release too, right, is your, your kind of cloud capabilities. Uh, uh, you, you've really kind of ramped up your, your ability to scale for the kind of largest customers. Talk a little bit as about how, you, how, where, how the uh, application uh, functions in the cloud, how it functions on-prem, how, how does that all work end to end? Right, so uh, back in November, we announced a new platform called Enterprise A2019. This was the first cloud native web-based platform okay. in the industry. And the reason why cloud native is important is because it's what gives you the benefits in terms of scaling, in terms of uh, TCO, in terms of easy to use. And uh, that platform uh, is now the core platform for the company. And so the product announcement we had yesterday allows our customers to use the same platform, except now we add a discovery bot at the front end to discover the process, prioritize them, and then use the platform we've announced to automate these processes. Uh, what's very interesting about the platform is that customers can use it on-prem, can use it in the cloud. The customers obviously that decide to use it in the cloud will have uh, the ability to learn more from the platform because you know, it's going to uh, tackle a lot more data uh, in the cloud and we're going to be able to use uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, lots of uh, uh, data analysis tools to be able to uh, uh, get the customers to uh, extract knowledge uh, from it and then uh, innovate at a much faster rate. The people who are going to be using it on-prem typically are regulated industries or uh, customers who have uh, systems of records that typically are on-prem and they would like the bots to run where the systems are. So the platform is available in the cloud, it's available on-prem, it's a customer's choice to decide how to use it but the innovation that's packed into it is what's really exciting about it. So, so this is kind of a, I think it's kind of a fundamental point maybe people should understand, right? So what you're, this is kind of a brave new world, right? You're saying we're kind of cloud native app Right, which is now ready to be used on-prem. Right, right. As opposed to maybe the older world, where people develop applications that were primarily based for kind of a server architecture within the firewall. Right, exactly. And then they tried to migrate it to the cloud. Exactly. And so, so in some sense, you've done the reverse. Exactly. So if you were to build an application today, mm -hmm. knowing you know microservices architecture, knowing Java, knowing web-based, that's how you would build it. And so the fact that you build the architecture for a modern application and then offer the options to customers to use it either on-prem or in the cloud is what we've done. 
Got it, great. Okay, and so then what's the advantage of being able to use, so you've got this, this, this application which can scale with microservices, right? It can handle the volume right. that a Fortune 500 company might, might need. What's the advantage for them being able to do it on-prem? What, 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 well, so, what so, does that help? So for so some customers, it's really about regulated industries. For example, if you're a bank, if you're a healthcare institution, the data cannot travel to the cloud. Understood. So the systems of records, whether it's a, a CRM, whether it's HRM or some other systems of records or ERP, uh, usually will be on-prem and the data can travel to the cloud. So for these customers, we're saying, use the product on-prem, you have the same benefit, it's still the cloud architecture, microservices based, it's still web-based as far as the client and interface is concerned, it's still lowest TCO you can get, but you don't have to worry about getting to the cloud if that's what you decide to do. So if, in terms of enabling digital transformation, really the, 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 the requirement here is to be able to enable that both in the cloud and on-prem and do it simultaneously. Correct, okay. correct, correct. And, and again, some customers will do a hybrid of both and they'll say for these workloads, we'll have them in the cloud, for these, we'll keep them on-prem. Some customers in regulated industries will say, we don't want to do anything in the cloud. We want everything on-prem. They'll have the choice to do that. Understood, okay. Well look, final question here. Yes. Let, let's talk about kind of some of the upcoming events that, that Automation Anywhere has going on, right? You, you do events all across the globe. You're now a global company. T tell us what's happening on that front. Yeah, so we do lots of events. Uh, you know, because our customers are global. We have customers in 90 countries. We have offices in 45 uh, countries. And so we have to go where our customers are. So we have four large uh, conferences throughout the year. Uh, one upcoming in London, we have it in, in Vegas, in, in Tokyo, and in Bangalore as well. And it's the largest gathering of RPA uh, minds and experts in the industry today. So what's exciting about the one that's coming up is obviously Discovery Bot's going to be featured at that uh, conference. People will be able to play uh, with, the, with the product. They'll be able to understand you know, uh, the latest uh, innovations uh, uh, from uh, Automation Anywhere. We have sessions that are called Build the Bots, where people will be able to build their bots uh, on site, and that's always a popular thing for people to do. And then we're going to have some amazing speakers and thought leaders who will help customers understand you know, uh, what's happening in digital transformation and how intelligent automation can accelerate that transformation. Okay, great, and so just to understand the timing of it. So you've got a show coming up in London, very very near future yes, here, is I, that right? I believe it's in uh, April, and then we have another one in May in Las Vegas. Okay, and then the, there's a big one in North America that's going to be Vegas this year. Correct, correct, okay. it's in May. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. And then what about the international, so then you also talked about Bangalore. Talk, yeah, talk I think about what's Bangalore, happening. I don't have all the dates in my head, so I apologize, yeah. but I think Bangalore is, I believe, in, in, uh, in uh, August or September, and then uh, Tokyo, I believe it's in June, so I'll have to confirm all those dates. But. but one of the unique things, right, is that Bangalore show has actually been one of your largest shows of the year. It, it's been amazing, so I literally missed that show uh, by one week when I joined the company. I was super excited about having the ability to go uh, visit uh, the, uh, the customers and the partners who attend the show. I think last year they had 6,000 people, so it's, it's, it's an amazing uh, opportunity this year to go see it firsthand. Uh, I don't know what the audience is going to be like. I'm assuming it's going to be more than 6,000, but you know, feeling the energy and the excitement from uh, attendees is what I'm really looking forward to. Well, that's, that, I mean, that just shows, right? The, the software industry, particularly cloud-enabled software industry, is now a global industry. It is, right? it is, absolutely, because again, cloud allows those barriers to entry for companies wherever they are to be lowered, and customers in different regions can have the latest, greatest uh, directly from the cloud and be able to use the product you know, when it comes out. And so that's uh, obviously a super big advantage. The other thing I should, I should be remiss if I didn't say is that, you know, because it's also available uh, in the cloud and it's web-based, it's easy to use, easy to access, a lot of our first-time customers are business users. They're not even IT people. So they just go in, start playing with the product, you know, automating a few processes, and then start to scale end-to-end. -end. And then of course, they build the COE, IT gets involved. So being able to start your automation journey is small and then grow uh, as you scale from any parts of the world is what truly really this opportunity uh, uh, gives us. Okay, well, thank you for your time today, uh, uh, Riyadh. I, I, fascinating everything you guys are doing. Super hot category. Uh, for those folks out there that, that want to touch base with Automation Anywhere, shows in uh, London, uh, Vegas, uh, Bangalore, and then where was the fourth one? I think Tokyo and Tokyo. Then Bangalore after that. Okay, yes. fantastic. All right. Yes. Thanks for uh, joining us today. This is Donald Klein. I'm the host of theCUBE. I'll see you next time.